Hi friends, uh, this is a course on risk-based engineering and today uh, we are discussing a very special topic uh, that is uh, probabilistic risk assessment for low power and shutdown state. The background is like this, uh, since the inception of the industry, uh, it was considered uh, that uh, once the plant is shut down, um, we are in absolutely safe condition. Uh, but then the experience over the year, uh, it suggested that uh, there is a risk component uh, even during the uh, shutdown state of the plant or during transient also. Trans transient means when we are changing power from one level to another level. So this necessitated um, even PRA model creation for low power and shutdown state. And uh, so this is how we are going to start here. And uh, I am Professor Prabhakar V. Varde uh, from uh, Homi Baba National Institute. So let us start. Uh, there is a disclaimer that you know uh, this presentation uh, is uh, not uh, sharing any specific information on a specific system, specific organization. More or less, it is a academic in nature, and the idea is to uh, discuss the risk-informed, risk-based technologies. Uh, for application of safety critical systems. So, uh, if you look at the things, let us take a uh, recap. Uh, initially, we discussed probabilistic risk assessment, that was part A, in which we discussed limited scope level 1 PSA. Any PRA project start with limited scope level 1 PRA. We know by this time what is level 1, level 2, level 3. Level 1 is system analysis, level 2 is contain, containment analysis, level 3 is uh, consequences in public domain. So, uh, limited scope, what it means basically is, it is not necessary to address all the initiating event, only go for uh, full power operation, reactor core is the source of uh, 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 hazard and uh, uh, third one is that you know all human factors, uncertainty, uh, all those analysis have been covered. So, uh, but today's, uh, today's talk on low power and shutdown PSA is basically part of extended uh, extension of limited scope level 1 PRA and this is what we are trying to cover under full scope PRA scheme. So, uh, full scope PRA scheme what uh, we are going to uh, discuss uh, in uh, uh, week, uh, uh, week 7 will be low power and shutdown state of course we have, we have uh, discussed and uh, and internal flood internal fire and then for external event there are uh, there are more than one external events which are important but here we will try to present seismic pra okay and then introduction to level 2 and level 3 why it has been designed like this because the uh, the audience who are listening to this talk, they get a full spectrum of PRA, that is level 1, level 2, level 3, internal, external. So, uh, in that sense, the uh, for the sake of completeness, even level 2, level 3 and external event, they form part of uh, uh, this uh, lecture. Now, uh, uh, L, uh, low power and shutdown state, we will call LPSD. Uh, and that's how LPSD PRA, low power and shutdown state PRA, all through we'll be using the term LPSD, not low power and shutdown state. So first we'll uh, provide inter, uh, introduction for this topic. That is uh, risk component from low power and shutdown state, how it creeps in and uh, even though compared to the power operation, the risk component is much lower, but then uh, it is better to address it so this is how the spirit is and then the outage states what are the different plant outage configurations are there that we will be discussing then identification of operational uh, states what are the uh, see what is the hardware and uh, software or other configuration and then what are the different oper operational states how this hardware and all they combine and they operate uh, in different operational states and then for this uh, low power and shutdown state, we will identify the initiating event the way we identified for full power operation in uh, last module 
and then uh, uh, role of availability factor in uh, uh, low power and shutdown uh, state PSA, quantification of initiating events, what are the initiating events that are possible that uh, could be initiator for the accident if they are not controlled or managed properly and then results and insight. So this is all going to be part of LPSD uh, shutdown state. Now uh, why LPSD PRA? Uh, as I gave you some background here, uh, there are some uh, there are some uh, thing. Uh, there is there, first we said discussed that there was a general consensus that shutdown state, even though it is a very low, but it is not zero or it is not negligible. So that need to be studied, and the, that's why PRA scope was extended to uh, low power and shutdown state. Uh, now, uh, uh, you, even though the inventory or uh, hazard component is low, uh, there is a, there is a uh, requirement and, and that we understood that we, we have to perform uh, this study. Potential for reactivity transient cannot be ruled out outrightly uh, because this is for nuclear plant but it is for any industry, any specific industry in shutdown state also some, uh, some events are there which are still applicable and that need to be addressed. Now uh, transient shutdown characteristic. Now when the plant is in low, uh, full power to low power, low power to shutdown, so the, the, the in between there are transient states. So tra transient from uh, low power, uh, high power or full power to uh, no, 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 low power and then low power to shutdown states. So these are the things that need a modeling. Then once the plant reaches shutdown state, uh, the systems and components uh, because plant has been shut down to, uh, to uh, reactivate some system, to, uh, to address some uh, failure, maintenance and all that. So uh, it is quite possible because plant is not in the reference state. Uh, so uh, and the maintenance activities are uh, very high so the human factor comes into the picture and that is where chances of error or mistakes are there so uh, that that is uh, these are the two reasons transient uh, and shutdown characteristic now plant configuration so, uh, what are the activities to be managed it requires uh, it requires a, a thorough communication coordination uh, and protocols and uh, adherent to our plant safety document is called technical specification. So they are there and then need to be addressed. So additional internally even naturally uh, for any industry it can be fire, flood, industrial aspects because uh, uh, take for example some welding going on in some, some area or some pipelines are being repaired. So uh, any innovative and failure and you might, uh, might have an event over there. So. Uh, so flood, fire and all for any industrial system they are applicable. And then uh, domain specific activities uh, like nuclear plants are shut down uh, for fueling and fueling uh, of course some for some plants it is done during operation also but uh, if you see uh, some technologies like uh, uh, BWR, PWR or boiling water reactor, pressurized water reactor the plant need to be shut down. So uh, there are shutdown uh, activities which is called fueling we are, and normally it is called fueling shutdown and other maintenance activities are also taken parallelly. But then uh, there is there are a lot of technical interlock. We, one acti uh, if activity if we are taking, second activity should not be taken up for some technical reason. And then th these interlocks are there and they are very well defined in our technical specifications. So uh, even the shutdowns have to be managed uh, as per the technical uh, uh, specification. And the chances for human error should be reduced as far as possible. And then another uh, uh, safety implication that uh, comes from common cause failure. Any activity going on in the area or system uh, should not have a common cause failure component. Common cause failure means uh, one single event and it is leading to uh, reduction in redundancy or diversity. Diversity is difficult because they operate on different principles but redundancy uh, should not get affected. And of course the, uh, the safety function uh, should be maintained all through even though the like for nuclear plant heat production is only uh, less than 5% during shutdown. But then even that has to be catered to and uh, norms should be followed for cooling and uh, maintaining the reactivity uh, margin. So uh, and then uh, 
uh, like that, uh, there are a lot of insights from IAEA, NEA, uh, from national, international uh, or nations, other, uh, and, and we, we can have a very good insight into a low power and shutdown state. Now, uh, as uh, we discussed, uh, what, how to identify different plant operational states, because each operational state, uh, if I say low power, it will have its unique, um, uh, unique characteristic. If it is a shutdown, it will have unique characteristic. If it is a cold shutdown, it will have unique, uh, uh, different characteristic. And then if it is a complete shutdown, then also it will have unique. So there are many operational states have been defined, point number one. Second thing is different uh, uh, plant configuration uh, are required for, uh, for each uh, of the uh, plant operating states. So, uh, the characteristic of PO, uh, plant operating state, in short we call POS and henceforth we will be using the word POS, uh, can also be characterized by unique features like um, uh, status of plant and uh, status of key safety features. Okay? So th this is one thing. And then uh, normal cooling and shutdown cooling mode, that is another uh, characterization. Uh, uh, if it is uh, fueling operation is do, uh, going on, then it is a, uh, a different state. Safety feature testing, if we are doing testing for some safety features, then, uh, then uh, we have to see that it is not uh, affecting other uh, systems in an adverse manner. Maintenance jobs have to go on ensuring that um, the plant procedures are followed and policy emergency, periodic emergency deal, these are the things that we have to see. The limitation here is uh, the above is not exhaustive whatever I am uh, listing out is not exhaustive. If for every specific industry, there could be more, more than what we discuss, uh, POS. Uh, and then uh, a systematic analysis is required to identify different plant operating states, uh, keeping in view the uh, risk consideration and of course the availability consideration also. Now, uh, uh, we discussed about POS. Now, we are uh, the second component which comes in the matrix is uh, plant configuration. What are the plant configuration for different uh, operating states? So, and uh, plant operation and management is performed by trained and licensed and authorized engineer. It has to be borne in mind that uh, especially nuclear plants are operated by highly trained staff. Uh, um, just to give you uh, a feel of it, uh, a B.Tech engineer, after undergoing one year training, then it, he goes on for at least three and half years of training uh, for his uh, training for operating a reactor or uh, becoming authorization for even sitting on the console that is in the control room of the plant. So these are the strict norms that are followed and that's how the nuclear industry has been maintaining very high safety standards. So uh, taking that as a reference, that plant uh, are being uh, operated and managed by highly trained staff. Uh, uh, so uh, this uh, helps in understanding um, the safety or conversely speaking risk component in much better because, uh, because uh, we have a very uh, standard atmosphere ecosystem in nuclear plants. Generally, power maneuvering also is done by, you can, you can imagine, even the uh, startup shutdown and power raise and lower in a nuclear plant is done by after authorization only. That means a person gets trained, uh, he does minimum checklist and uh, minimum number of checklist uh, to get uh, um, qualify for the exam and after giving exam and all and once the interview is over, then only he is allowed to sit on the console. So, so very high standard of uh, human factors are uh, maintained uh, in the nuclear plant and we, we, uh, we also uh, feel that other in industry also uh, must have been maintaining this kind of high level of uh, human factor qualification and authorization requirements. Now, the uh, when plant is in shutdown, uh, uh, it requires special attention. Uh, the the uh, the staff in control room the co uh, who uh, he is coordinating with the maintenance staff and other staff and then um, the uh, uh, and then the activities are managed in a manner that uh, accidents are avoided or even incidents are avoided so that uh, the uh, we can start the plant in time plant in time and again uh, 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 generate the deliverables and. Uh, 
in shutdown uh, of course it is applicable to any industry uh, other than the plant job uh, unplanned jobs also uh, come into picture plant jobs are what uh, testing and uh, 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 based on the technical specific uh, patient um, uh, charting out a maintenance schedule and all that and then is adhering to that schedule but during that process if you have some uh, some new findings then the uh, breakdown maintenance or sometimes we call it as a um, precautionary measure maintenance are taken up so that uh, we have a smooth plant operation. Now, uh, uh, as I mentioned, uh, every industry will have job and uh, the sh there will be shutdown like refueling is a special activity in nuclear plant, testing of safety system is a special activity. In, uh, now, uh, let, let us say this way, the testing of safety equipment is a routine for any industry. So, uh, uh, so uh, like fueling, there can be many charging activities will be there for uh, charging or you know uh, uh, preparing the plant for another uh, another one year of operation so whatever uh, requirements are there that uh, that has to be maintained in the shutdown and then identifying the uh, 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 challenges uh, the challenges for every industry will be specific so that has uh, that specially has to be catered to now uh, number of outage configuration uh, depends on the type of industry. But in, in this lecture, we have taken some uh, outage configuration and uh, uh, let us see how it comes. So through this uh, uh, flowchart, I am uh, trying to depict what are the POS, plant operating states. So here we are covering 13 plant states and uh, that, that you can see normal operation, of course, reference condition. Uh, then transient, when we want to deviate from normal operation, to shut down, so there is a uh, normal operation to shut down, and then from norm, normal operation to uh, sorry, normal operation to low power, and from low power to shut down, and then uh, transient uh, from low power to shut down. So these are the things. Then primary to uh, shut down cooling. Once the plant has been shut down, then cooling modes, you, uh, uh, the plant's uh, cooling uh, requirements reduces drastically once it is shut down. So there, there will be a shutdown cooling mode which, uh, which provides cooling in terms of 10 to 10 to 10 percent or so, so that uh, that system can sustain till the plant outage is going, going on and after that uh, and then of course as I said refueling is one of the important activities in shutdown. Uh, normally in power, uh, power plant they, this is also called refueling outage actually. And then some testing of equipments like uh, uh, safety system remain standby, dormant. And how uh, uh, one can be sure that uh, they will be uh, they will be getting activated when a demand is placed on them. So that's why a periodic testing has to be done. And this testing uh, provides us an idea what is the reliability of the system that they will be available. It is called actually availability of the system at a given epoch of time. So the testing ensures uh, these kind of things. Along with that, so many prevent, uh, preventive maintenance activities are also performed. Uh, then uh, either with the testing or separately, sometimes some activities goes on in parallel. So then we have scheduled shutdown jobs like maintenance jobs and all that, that, that also goes on. And once the system, uh, uh, all shutdown jobs are over, then normalization process start. It's a lengthy pro pro procedure, okay. Um, uh, takes around one hour or so. So uh, then system normalization and then primary to uh, shut down to primary cooling. Now we have to go, uh, since we are going uh, heading towards plant startup, then we have to normalize the cooling system. So cooling system is shut down cooling to normal cooling and, uh, and then uh, transient from sh uh, shut down to LP operation. In terms of uh, power operation, now reactor is, uh, is leaving the shutdown state and going to LP operation. From LP operation to normal operation, uh, these are the things. And uh, that's how the plant comes to the original uh, power level uh, where it was there right in the beginning and then finally it enters here in the uh, state again. So this shutdown jobs have been completed. For each activity there is an operation, see like uh, time, like for, uh, for normal operation uh, typically plant operate uh, around 8760 means uh, hours means uh, one year. And then other time factors have been typical time factors um, uh, which are which are there have been uh, given here and they are indicative only. The uh, idea is to explain the procedure, not to go into the uh, details of uh, how that fraction, this fraction, and all. But, but they are representative one. Uh, 
um, are typical one. And uh, how plant state is there from uh, normal uh, uh, cooling to uh, transient, okay, and then shut down cooling, then shut down again transient and normal cooling. And then as far as the uh, plant shutdown system is concerned, all shutdown, shutdown devices are withdrawn. That means plant is in operating state, low power, high power or whatever. And then plant shutdown transient and then uh, then this, uh, this uh, plant comes into shutdown state that is it becomes subcritical. Uh, when the nuclear plants are shut down, they are, it is called subcritical uh, thing, uh, uh, level actually. And then again start up and then again all shutdown devices are withdrawn. So, plant goes to the full power operation. So, this is the complete cycle uh, we have seen uh, of outage configuration. So, there are 13 uh, uh, plant operating states and different configuration we have studied. And uh, now, uh, let us see how we identify the initiating events. Uh, assessment of applicability to an initiating uh, uh, to a set of plant operating say, initiating event to a set of operating this is the objective here so uh, the broad procedure to identify screening and grouping of initiating events are almost like uh, what we do for full power operation only uh, uh, only we have to see the specific characteristic of that particular uh, operation state and what kind of configuration is required and what kind of initiating event can adversely affect the uh, plant. So, uh, so for uh, for normal operation whatever initiating events we have, um, here also we will have set of initiating event for each state. Like for example, uh, uh, when fueling is going on, uh, the, now in fueling we have to ensure the cooling uh, because even the, whatever the residual heat is, the heat is there a particular amount of flow has to be maintained through the machine. Now uh, that a, any interruption in that flow uh, will, uh, will, uh, be, will generate an initiating event. Of course uh, uh, more, for most of the time it will have an internal event on, uh, internal effect only but then uh, the even initiating events, uh, event consideration means uh, we are attracting attraction of the uh, attracting attention of the plant uh, staff to uh, this particular uh, phenomena. So this is uh, uh, now let us say we are uh, we are going for some uh, some uh, maintenance job in shutdown and uh, there is a there is a uh, a pipeline running across the uh, length and breadth of the uh, uh, plant area and suppose uh, that pipeline ruptures during some jobs. So that means uh, uh, what what consequences is going to there? That we'll see in our you know, flooding event. But then, uh, if we are, are making some changes in the plant, uh, we have to be sure that we are uh, addressing to that characteristic of the uh, plant. Now, uh, we are, now we are, after having selected, uh, like first we map all normal power event. Let's say. Uh, the, uh, take a case of loop uh, or class 4 power failure. Now class 4 power failure you can see if it is applicable for any state of the uh, or outage condition of the plant. So the, this is a matrix which shows um, the major plant operating states and what are the initiating events which are either they were part of uh, full power operation or new events like shutdown cooling. Shutdown cooling was part of safety system here, but lot of maintenance activities are going on. So, can shutdown system initiate some event uh, in the outage condition? So, you can see here this uh, nomenclature uh, we have given on the previous slide. So, we can uh, co correlate those things. So, these are all outage states and then here is shutdown state and restart state and this makes the all operating uh, plant operating states. Now, the main cooling system if any activity is going on in uh, uh, shutdown uh, then we have this initiation applicable for 2.1 2.2 2.3 and uh, even 3.1 also similarly loss of coolant accident uh, activity meant some maintenance activity or testing activities are going on uh, so there also it gets affected so this is a um, matrix which which has been developed it is a typical one uh, not representing uh, any uh, specific configuration, you know. So, uh, the, now we saw the initiating event, we saw the plant operating state and we saw the different plant configuration. And I think with this, uh, following the 
uh, following the procedure given in, in for full power operation, a large part of this uh, that is acceptable here, uh, except that we have to consider the new specific element of this. Event. Now, this is the first point. Second point is when we talk about the initiating event, um, initiating event one year 365 days and then we have uh, 8760 hours in a year. So, uh, when we are doing for shutdown state also uh, for PRA, then uh, uh, the availability factor comes into the picture. That means how long typically plant remains in operation. So, that will come from and how long it remains under shutdown. So, availability factor will be defined by how long the plant remains in operation and let us say uh, suppose if we have why we are discussing is because it will change our way of estimating the initiating event frequency for full power as well as for low power. Normally one year means we take one year means 365 days and uh, how many events have taken place one two like uh, power failure one power failure so one per year. But then um, so when we are doing this activity for normal operation also and shutdown also. So, um, uh, the argument is uh, even class 4 power failure can, uh, can uh, occur uh, in shutdown state also. So, that apportionment has to be decided and let us say uh, here if we take, uh, take the availability factor as a, as a key, um, so let us say if it is uh, 90 percent for a plant, we have, we have assumed or we have uh, taken a decision that for 90 percent availability factor, uh, we will do initiating event quantification. So, now uh, it is quite clear that the plant remains operating for 784 hours and 876 hours uh, almost like uh, 30 days plus uh, one day actually. So, uh, it remains in shutdown and now if you work out that apportionment for defining the frequency. So, if total frequency was 1.8 years, so for full power operation it can go around 1.62 it is approximate calculation and uh, 0.2 it can go for shutdown. That means the initiating event frequency apportionment which has gone to, gone to the shutdown that means in 5 years one event has happened in shutdown state also. So, this kind of apportionment has to be affected uh, for uh, getting a risk from uh, full power operation and for a LP uh, low power shutdown state. And uh, these are simple formulation how to estimate the initiating event uh, frequency. Now, uh, first formulation is for annual uh, frequency and we have uh, the data uh, that is hourly uh, estimation of uh, frequency uh, that is uh, failure per hour. And then if we have uh, TPOS that means the time period for plant operating state. Uh, that is 30 days or uh, you know uh, five, five, uh, 5 days or 15 days and the, depending on that and we can get the annual frequency for that particular uh, situ, uh, shutdown state. Now, um, there is sometimes the, the uh, second model uh, that is annual frequency you estimate by uh, having a uh, uh, plant operating state uh, this thing. So, this model is used when data is initiating is not available. Okay. However, the record shows that the data on precursor event is available, uh, power failure and its precursor. So, if we have one precursor, then we have this formula that, uh, that uh, FP that is what is the frequency of precursor, hourly frequency into probability of initiating event given the precursor into previous. It is same, but here we have a conditional probability statement here. Okay. Now, the third model uh, comes into the picture, um, uh, it, it provides estimate based on the precursor events, initiating events arise due to error of commission or omission following an event which occurs uh, in a, at a fixed number of times in a uh, given point state. So, this is the third formulation for annual frequency number of uh, uh, plant operating states into n that is how we encounter the n events and then finally, it is same as uh, into probability of initiating event given the probability of the um, uh, probability of the uh, precursor uh, event actually. Uh, okay. And then uh, the time for operating state. So, these are the ready made available uh, formulation, some formulation, but when we really start the analysis like we, we, I developed, uh, I discussed in previous slide, sometime we have to develop our own procedures also because we, these are the data available as, these are the condition available as 
generic source, plant specific source, so many uh, metrics are formed and then on that thing you have to take a call. So it, it was basically uh, a, a simple uh, three formulation uh, for estimating the uh, frequency of uh, initiating event for a given plant operating state. Now uh, what we have discussed here is background of uh, full power, normal power because uh, full power operation was our module 1 and module B is uh, LP and other states which makes the level of PRA extension of from limited scope to full scope and the, uh, LPSD was one of the component of that thing uh, and then uh, uh, LPSD comprised of identifying plant operating states, identifying the uh, system configuration, then metrics and then quantification of LPSD. I have not discussed uh, the fault tree, event tree, which are uh, you know, uh, uh, the, which are have been discussed in our uh, full power state also. Here also the same formulation. Uh, uh, in uh, now in this uh, module that is uh, uh, that is extension of uh, 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 limited scope to full scope. I'll I'll be giving in level two, level three also. I'll be uh, I'll be discussing only specific features which are new and those features which really. Uh, become core even if it is repetitive even if it is a core component and explains some uh, specific features so th those will be discussed so uh, here uh, we have lpsd psa uh, in short or whatever required um, an individual can start doing for his own uh, his own plant on the low power and sh uh, shutdown or you can say shutdown uh, uh, risk assessment using PRA, PRA methodology. Thank you. I will see you in the next lecture.